Hey, what's everyone? It's the Lemesis, Lemesis, your nemesis, but you can call me Lem. Welcome to Just Another Cheesehead Podcast. And uh, Jordan Love got paid. He got the money. The monies. He's the multi-million dollar man. And, uh, you know, last video I did, you know, it was, it was long, you know, whatever. Listen to it if you're interested. Um but this is the one that matters, I think, as of right now. It's going to recap a lot of the things I spoke on the other uh, podcasts, and it's recent. It's live. I mean, we're we're talking about maybe an hour and a half to two hours ago. Um, it's official that Jordan Love got paid $220 million over four years. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 9.09 p.m. is when this was posted by Bobby Col I don't know how to pronounce his last, last name, Kownick or Kownack. But, um, man, it's inked. I saw it kind of go up on my feed, YouTube, social media, whatever. You know, I'm, I mean, not really social media, but YouTube is technically social media, but that's a debate for another day. So um, I kind of want to read through this article because this is all new to me. I tried to quickly put up something just so I can get on here and we can chat. So let's get it. You know, do the things you need to do. Twitter, follow, Lemesis, whatever, YouTube, Twitch, like, et cetera. Let's go. So a year and some change after moving on from Aaron Rodgers, the Packers have already locked down the league's highest paid quarterback in Jordan Love. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Oh, my God. I'm not laughing. This is not joy. This is not laughters of joy. This is laughter of uh, horror, horror, how to pronounce that correctly. It's terrible. Uh, Green Bay is signing love to a four year, $220 million contract extension that puts him in a tie for the highest paid player in NFL history. That's what you think. That's what you think. You think he should be paid just as much as Joe Burrow. And you see Dak Prescott struggling over there in Dallas. This fool, man, like Jerry Jones doesn't want to pay Dak Prescott. And he's over there just, he's like, what did he say the other day? He was like, you know, there's, I've learned in life. There's some things that you want and the things that you, and you don't want. And then sometimes you don't get the things you want. And then after that, after you don't get the things you want, you learn that you might end up with something better than you ever thought you wanted. AKA, I'm not playing that jig of nothing. Like, <laughs> he's not paying of anything. And you're telling me, as a Packer fan, you want this? What's up, Cryops? I see you. You want this? You want to pay Jordan Love $220 million? Over four years, let's go to the stats. Let's pull up some PFF rankings. Let's just go over a few things. So according to PFF, if we just skip right to the chase, they have him ranked as the 11th best quarterback in the league. So as the 11th best quarterback in the league, you deserve the same pay. That means every player at the QB position, who's ranked in the top 11, should be getting paid at a minimum of $55 million a year. Because what Jordan Love did last year is nowhere near enough to warrant this kind of pay. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's asinine. It makes absolutely no sense. Trevor Lawrence, let, let's, let's bump it back. Trevor Lawrence is number 12. <laughs> so they're saying... The top 12 QBs in the league all deserve a base minimum of 55 or up. That means if I'm Joe Burrow, I'm pissed. If I'm Joe Burrow, if I'm Patrick Mahomes, if I'm Lamar Jackson, get the, you know, get out of here. Ain't no way you about to pay me 55 million. This bum over here, Jordan Love, getting paid 55 million a year. I went to a Super Bowl. If if he went to a Super Bowl and is getting 55, Jordan Love won a playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys, lost to the San Francisco 49ers with an awful play at the end of the game. 
then what is Patrick Mahomes worth? At least like $70 million a year? If he really wanted to get paid, I think he could be a $70 million a year man. And you couldn't be mad at that. He's got three Super Bowl rings already. Pay that dude $70 million. Lamar Jackson has MVPs. Joe Burrow at least went to a Super Bowl. Josh Allen, everybody's big on Josh Allen. He's just a little better Ben Roethlisberger. And honestly, if he doesn't even like go to a Super Bowl, he's useless. What's the point? Justin Herbert is trash. I have no idea why everybody talks about this dude like he's so great. The same with Dak Prescott. He's trash personified. Matthew Stafford, he won a Super Bowl recently. He's had talent. He was stuck up in Detroit for such a long time. Finally got his ring. Actually, you know, being a Packer fan, I was happy for him. One, I mean, he did. I'm I'm pretty sure uh, we didn't even, I don't remember that year when he won, but I know we got beat or we didn't make it, whatever. I'm not going to go back into the the history of that right now because I can't even gather my info. Aaron Rodgers, who gave up 30-something million dollars, he's with the Jets. You think you should be getting paid more than him. Jalen Hurts, I think he's a bum too. He's trash. He he he's one of he's he's worse than Jordan Love, to be frank with you. But he did more than Jordan Love. So if Jalen Hurts, if Jay, I don't even think much of Jalen Hurts, but if Jalen Hurts took him to the Super Bowl, he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl, he should be getting 55 million a year. He should be getting more, like 60. And then you get to CJ Stroud, who I believe had a better season than than um than Jordan Love. Now, I know you I know you look at the numbers that are close, but look at the play. There's no way you look at the play and you look at the numbers and you look at both players with your eyes and you tell me that Jordan Love played just as good as CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud played this good all season. Jordan Love was like a bum. He had the first game with the Bears, then he looked like a bum for about 7 to 8 games and then he turned it around and looked decent at the end of the year. This guy better be the next coming to Aaron Rodgers. And if he ain't the next coming to Aaron Rodgers, it's a fail. He needs to be at least, he, I'll, you know, I'll pull it back because Aaron Rodgers is the greatest we've ever seen throw the ball. He needs to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. You know it and I know it right now. I don't care if they never re-sign this dude ever again. Paying this dude four years, $55 million a year, That means Green Bay thinks he's a Hall of Famer. So barring injury, if the guy gets injured, okay. Meaning we don't get to really see much of the game, of of his his play. We don't see him out on the field much, and injuries kind of hurt him. Then he has that whole what he could have been, should have been, and we'll never really know. But I want to see this, and and I'm willing to pull back my opinion then. This guy better be a Hall of Famer in some way, shape, or form, or capacity. Because setting the bar to Aaron Rodgers is unfair. That's me knee-jerk reacting, being like, oh, my God. Did I think Green Bay was going to do this? No. And what makes it so funny to me is, like, they they were so quick to get rid of Jordan Love. Sorry, get, quick, get, get rid of Aaron Rodgers for him. You thought you had a better chance winning Dude, like, let's be real. Last year, if Aaron Rodgers played another year with those rookies, you don't think they could have beaten the San Francisco 49? You know he, what he would have done in Dallas. That boy's got a record of putting that on. Assuming he didn't get hurt, and I would think he wouldn't get hurt because clearly the offensive line in Green Bay is 10 times better than the offensive line in, the, in uh, New Jersey where the New York Jets play. So, and now he's got a better offensive line there. So you're giving me the same Packers offensive line and you telling me that they couldn't have beaten the San Francisco 49ers. They couldn't have beaten. Now your argument's going to be the scheme. So you're going to sit here and praise Matt LaFleur in the scheme and tell me you trust Matt LaFleur more than Aaron Rodgers. Matt LaFleur hasn't won anything. Okay, he comes from the the Sean McVay tree with Shanahan, and he hasn't won anything. He's the he's the dude who's like eighteen degrees of separation from the guy you really want. You want Sean McVay, you want Shanahan, and then you're like, wait, you the dude who dated 
Shanahan's sister for a week. Okay, I want you. Like, that's the kind of guy he is. Now, I know they're closer than that. I know they're buddies. But it's like, bro, I don't, we don't want him. That's why he came on such a budget. And it's so easy to have a one-hit wonder season when nobody knows what you're going to do. Let's stop arguing. Like, let's stop acting like reality. This is not the Caitlin Clark effect, right? I am not Diana Taurasi over here talking about reality is going to set in. And what I mean by that is, like, I see Caitlin Clark's greatness. That girl was going to put the brakes. She was going to beat the brakes off them chicks in the WNBA. Because they haven't really been tested. We don't even need to talk about them. So I could just tell, like, you know what? This girl going to bring her skills to the game. She, it's over. Bruh. We saw Jordan Love play in the pros. We've seen so many players. We've seen Carson Wentz and RG3 and many others who come in, have a good year, and they fall off. Better years than what you saw with Jordan Love. Better years. Players winning rookie of the year and falling off. Even C.J. Stroud, as much as I love C.J. Stroud. I like that guy. I think he's going to do big things in the NFL. He seemed poised. He could fall off a cliff. He could be done. And we're not even just talking about the fact that you could get hurt and your whole career is over. Bruh, this kid has not proven anything. And I really would love to hear anyone argue this. This makes no sense. This kid has not done enough to be paid $55 million a year. I will congratulate him and his agent for duping an NFL franchise. Because this is wild to me. We talked on our last podcast. We talked about how, okay, <clears throat> my biggest gripe is that we should get rid of the salary cap. I don't think the salary cap should be here. We should completely get rid of it. Do it like major league. There's like 1,600 NFL players in the league. They split it roughly 48% with the owners. That does not include the coaches. We're talking about straight up revenue, right? So 2% probably goes to the coaches, maybe a little bit more, plus or minus, give or take. I'll leave that up to you. How many players in the NFL really get to see that 48% split? Like the most of the bulk of that is going to Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, now Jordan Love, Joe Burrow. Quarterbacks probably take up half of that 48%. So my argument on the last podcast was simple. Get rid of the get rid of the salary cap. Increase the next time they have another uh uh a bargaining agreement, renegotiate. They need to take way more revenue than that. These dudes, this is modern day gladiators. They putting their bodies out on the line. It makes absolutely no sense for them to be bringing in 48% as a group when most of the guys who are taking the, the brunt of the money are the cats sitting behind offensive line. And then we create this, uh, this nonsense conversation where we're like, the, all the pressure goes on the QB just because he got paid more when literally this whole system, the salary cap is a ploy. It gets you talking about a bunch of nonsense that doesn't matter. Talking about, oh, we lost that game because of Jordan Love. We lost that game because Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers. It's a bunch of nonsense. You don't lose the play. You don't lose the game with just one play. Right? There was a touchdown you missed earlier in the game. There's a field goal you missed earlier in the game. There's an interception you dropped early in the game. You could have been up 12. You could have been up 14. <laughs> But you dropped a pass. You fumbled the ball. You called the wrong play. The guy ran the wrong route. There was a missed throw. It's an entire team. It's 11 on 11. Offensive lineman, for a quarterback to throw the ball, the snapper, the center's got to snap the ball to the quarterback. That's got to be smooth. Then he's got to block the guy in front of him, and all the other dudes have to block. And then receivers have to run their routes and run them correctly. And they got to remember them correctly. And then the QB has to remember if he called the right play or he remembers the play that he called and throw the ball right where he needs to throw it. And then after he throws the ball, you can have a bunch of dudes just drop the ball, tight ends, wide receivers, running backs, but they don't. And then if he, if he completes the ball to a receiver, to a running back, to a tight end, he ran. He used his physical body and ran. Uh, 
Aaron didn't do that. Aaron didn't throw the ball to himself, catch it, and then run to the end zone. It's just illogical. Give him credit for throwing the ball. What a great pass. That was awesome. I want that kind of passer on my team. Fantastic. That's it. That's all he's doing. It's not like the NBA. In the NBA, you can play offense and defense. That's why there's the argument of the greatest of all time. And I don't think it's between LeBron James and Michael Jordan. I think that's foolish. It's Michael Jordan. Just stop with the nonsense. But you clearly see on both sides of the ball, even someone like LeBron earlier in his career played both sides of the ball. So I could get it early on in his career before he started losing all those finals when people were talking so much about him because he was great on defense and he was picking it up on offense, scoring in the paint, dunking the ball, throwing up layups. But in the NFL, you can't play both sides of the ball. Unless you're Deion Sanders. And he's arguably one of the greatest football players to ever live. So my whole point is, get rid of the salary cap because you will it'll stop this outrage. The outrage you're hearing right now is from the fact that the salary cap's in place. The owners are limited on how much they're going to spend. They basically capped themselves. They basically said, you know, we could get a little crazy. So let's put on like, you know, 200 million a year for us so that we don't spend too much. And that's what they did. So now this cat gets 55 million. Do y'all know how many cats are on the team? We talking about training. You, you got dudes on the practice squad they paying. Now they're not paying them a ton of money. But you got practice squad cats, you got the 53 man roster at the end of the at the end of training camp, mini camp, whatever. There's a ton of dudes on the team. The average what's the um what was it? The, I think the average salary in the NFL was like uh 500 k Let me see. The average no, no, that was the uh veterans minimum. NFL veterans, let's look this up. Man, I, I'm just over here. Freak, it's not even 500. I'm talking about this is something from back in the day. We're talking about years ago. That 500K I'm talking about was years ago. For the 2025 season, the rookie minimum salary is increased to 840K, while the veteran minimum salary is increased to 960K, dog. That's bonkers. So, again, you get rid of the salary cap, most of the players don't even see that 48%. Most of them. And for you to get that rookie minimum, you got to be drafted. So this is wild to me. We just crippled our team. Y'all really want me to watch the Jets this year. Like That's literally what's happening. <laughs> I mean, I was going to watch the Jets either way. I was very disappointed in seeing Aaron Rodgers get hurt. So I didn't get to at least have something good going on. I did get slightly excited near the end of the season, and I had a little more hope when it was like, oh, we playing Dallas? But, bro, we all knew we were going to lose against the San Francisco 49ers. And you know the reason why the 49ers looked so bad? They were they took time. They had time off, man. They didn't do anything. Then they go to the Super Bowl. They play like that against us. Look what they did to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. That game was so tight. The, the 49ers should have won that game. And you know if that team comes out against Green Bay, they make us look like a fool. I promise you Jordan Love throws three, four picks in the game. We had an opportunity to catch them, to catch them off guard. Remember when Bosa was talking that stuff? And if we would have got that W, if we would have got that victory, it would have made sense. I'd have been like, okay. Oh, wow. He, it, ain't, it ain't his fault that you rusty. It ain't his fault that he caught you off guard. But, man, we in their home catching these fools off guard, and we still lost the game. And it wasn't because our defense couldn't stop them or any of that. It was because of Jordan Love. Now, it's not just one play. I'll give you that. I'm not here to contradict myself. I know how y'all fools think sitting here listening and being like, well, you just said earlier. It wasn't just one play because there was multiple plays earlier in the game. We could have easily won the game, even with that pick. If we would have just went down to the end zone and scored twice. But what are we doing? Kicking field goals. That's not going to win a game. Game would have been out of reach. Jordan Love maybe never throws that stupid, horrible interception at the end of the game. Do you see my point? 
But now we're talking about has what he done been enough to garner this much? No, this is foolish. As long as there's a salary cap, this is retarded. This makes absolutely no sense. They're signing him to a four-year, $220 million extension that puts him to ties for the highest paid in the NFL. That's Rappaport. He's saying Love's deal also includes a record-setting $75 million signing bonus. <laughs> this is here. You know what's going to happen? Everybody was like, yo, get everybody in the locker room. Get Jordan Love paid. Get Jordan Love paid. Get Jordan Love paid. Guess what's going to happen? If Jordan Love does not turn out to be that guy or what the young kids say, he's him. If he ain't going to turn out to be him, then all he's going to do is cause more ruckus in the locker room. You know why? Because there's other players on that team that are him. There's other players that think they need to get paid and they think they're a part of Jordan Love's success. And this is the problem. It starts off, everybody up in here, we broke. I don't got no money. And it turns into, you got your money. Now, I need to get my money. We've seen it. Who was so mad? Why do you think people talk so much trash about Aaron Rodgers? Where did this all start? Do y'all remember? I remember. It's a great day to be great. Remember that? Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings was a big Aaron Rodgers fan. Loved Aaron Rodgers. Had no problems with Aaron Rodgers until what happened? Money. We already know love of money is the root of all evil. Money got involved and automatically, when this was all about being a business, it became more personal. And then the hate for Aaron Rodgers started. Thank God he could perform so well that he out lived and he outperformed the hate that was thrown towards him. It was all because of money, because they know that he was the man and that he was the guy calling the shots. And if he would have been up in their vocals saying, yo, you need to be bringing bank Greg Jennings back. You need to be paying your Michael Finley. You need to be helping out Donald driver. Maybe give him another year. If he would have said that back then, there's a good chance Greg Jennings might be on the team and, or, if he would have got involved, even if Green Bay would have decided to move on, that vocalness coming from them or coming from Aaron specifically, that helps in that relationship. But guess what happened? Aaron treated it like it was a business. I ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm out here performing. I'm an MVP player. I'm a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, you were on the team. That helped, right? Aaron Rodgers played with Devontae Adams, arguably the greatest receiver he's ever played with. I don't think he's the greatest receiver of all time. I don't even think that's close, but he's the greatest receiver he's ever played with, right? But he won MVPs before that. So he won them with Devontae. He won them with, you know, he won them with Greg Jennings. He won them with all these guys on the field, Jordy Nelson and James Jones. Those guys were good. You got to have a good team. You got to have good guys around you. But that doesn't take away from his greatness, nor does it take away from yours. Now, the problem is when you're the wide receiver catching the ball, if you don't have a great quarterback thrown to you, it kind of does take away from at least your performance, maybe not your greatness, because you can't perform as much. You can't perform as well. So I see problems in the horizon. I see problems coming. I see reality. I guess I am doing a little Diana Taurasi. I'm seeing reality set in. The difference is I'm not short-sighted like she was. I saw the way Caitlin Clark was playing, and I saw them chicks in the WNBA, and I knew they played like trash. They were bums. And I was like, yo, is this really what we're talking about? The average, I mean, we saw the All-Star game not too long ago. And what's her name? Obamakue. I forgot how to pronounce that chick's name. She was amazing. But most of the players in the, in the WNBA weren't playing like that. So if the average NBA player is not playing like that All-Star and the Olympic team that's going to defend is, is got beat by the WNBA team, that told me like, oh, Caitlin Clark coming in there. Oh, she's going to be able to dominate. She better than probably like 90% of the league. There's a few 10% that can really D her up and take her out. But she don't got to worry about that. It's not like in the NBA. 
everybody's that dude in the NBA. Everybody was basically that dude wherever they came from. In the WNBA, you could just see. One, you got to think about it. The league is so weak because it hasn't even expanded. How many great women are out there who can really dominate play? You haven't even seen, right? Just because simply, I'm not like how many doctors and lawyers, female lawyers, female doctors, female professionals could have been WNBA players, but they like, bruh, I'm not trying to go play for this league by the pay me 50,000 a year. <laughs> I'm going to go make my 200 K and finish my degree and become a doctor. I'm going to be a dentist. I'm going to go work and become a CEO of a company. I would never like for real. I would never tell my daughter to go play in the WNBA right now. There's no money there. Even with a little new contract ringing up, I don't know how that translates financially, but I'm sure you not every single player in the WNBA is averaging that much. And I bring all that up to say, I saw that with Caitlin, and we seen her cook and breaking records. What did Jordan Love do? We saw last year the Green Bay Packers try to throw up some retarded stat of like, he threw for nine passes on average per game for 12 yards or more. It was some, it was some garbage. It was some straight up garbage. Nobody cares about that stat. And then they're like, oh, wait, wait. I love how they always bring this up. Aaron Rodgers, he didn't throw for 300 yards for a game last year. It's about did we win or did we lose? Did we win or did we lose? That's all that matters. Nobody goes and looks back and goes, oh, we won the Super Bowl, but he threw for, for 5,000 yards in the game. Nobody cares. Perfect example. Great show. You watch it. It's Speak. Emmanuel Acho. Check it out. Sometimes they got the shenanigans. I don't really like what LaShawn McCoy and... and uh, I can't even remember her name right now off the top of my head. Um, but I can't stand those two. They're so, they're so annoying. But LaShawn McCoy, he's got two Super Bowl rings. Two. He's got the same stats that I got. Cat didn't even play in the game. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Nobody remembers. Did you play? Did you not play? How many catches did you have? So that's my point. Jordan Love does not deserve to get paid this much. He had to at least play another year. To me, he did what he was supposed to do with the rules that were set. We're not going to argue that. We're not arguing, do you know the rules? Do you know the salary cap? Blah, blah, blah. No one's saying that. I get the rules. I understand the foolishness. I understand the tomfoolery. I'm saying it's stupid. These dudes should not be getting paid that much. You got Trevor Lawrence out here. You got <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. Y'all can't, y'all can't pay Trevor Lawrence all that money. Tua got paid. Tua got paid. It's like, it's bonkers to me, man. You're just going to have all these heavily inflated teams where they're just not going to win, bro. They're just not going to win. And what? You're just making it easy for Patrick Mahomes every single year. Do we just guarantee... Patrick Mahomes going to win another two Super Bowls in the next couple of years, maybe three. This is insane. Barring injury, of course. It's over. We might have our next Tom Brady right now, honestly. I still don't think Tom Brady is the greatest, but I do think if I had to pick between guys who have a lot of Super Bowls, meaning three or more, I'm picking Patrick Mahomes over Tom Brady every day because he's more talented. He can do more. So to me right now, it's Patrick Mahomes. Tom Brady is not that talented. He's got the brains, but this dude physically can't do it. He don't got the strongest arm. He's just really smart, and he's accurate. And he's had really, really great. He's had a great coach, had arguably the greatest coach in NFL history, who's had some of the greatest defenses we've ever seen. That's why when I look at what Patrick Mahomes is doing compared to what he's doing, it's, it's not to me, it's not close. Patrick Mahomes looked good in his first two, three Super Bowls. Tom Brady looked like a bum in his three first three Super Bowls. He looked like trash. Ain't no way you end his career after those three Super Bowls and you're going to tell me he's the greatest. 
Go look it up. Go look up the stat. I watched the games. He was trash. Now, did he turn it around? Does he have a great story? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All you Brady lovers. Yeah. He did that. I'm not taking that from him, but he was at the right place at the right time. And if you think you're the greatest just because you're at the right place at the right time, then you're not looking at the details. That's why I don't like talking to people like that. Come with the details. Come with the specifics. And not specifics that are inflated by your metrics and your design. Look, it's about the team. It's about the team. So, you know, but I'm not going to get into that because I always feel like every conversation I could just talk and complain about that. It's about Jordan Love. And he didn't deserve this. This guy, regular season, 96.1 rating, 108 in the postseason. Mainly that all came from one game. One game. And that was against the Dallas Cowboys, which if you want to base your idea of Jordan Love off of the one game against the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, my goodness. And then you saw reality when we played against the 49ers. And the truth is against the 49ers. I mean, look, his QBR was 42.9 against the 49ers. Two touchdowns, two interceptions, 61% completion. That is the fact. That's what you paid for. You think that's worth $55 million a year. He averaged a five, he averaged 5.7 yards. Come on, man. 21 for 34, 194 yards. Oh, guess who didn't throw for 300 yards? Jordan Love. And you can't say it's because he's old because he's not. You see my point? This is why it don't make any sense. Well, when he plays against the 49ers, he looks like trash. Well, guess what? So did Jordan Love. You complain about Aaron Rodgers. You complain about all these other QBs or whoever you want to talk trash about. Guess what? Great defense. Back in 2011, I remember we won the Super Bowl, and then we lost all those. Uh, we lost a lot of players, a lot of subtle players that we lost that really, really brought us over the hump for many reasons, injuries, free agency, et cetera. <clears throat> and Aaron Rodgers was big on pushing the whole, I don't know about defense winning championships. <laughs> I remember that. And I remember being like, yeah, dog. Yeah, defenses don't win championships. Offense, baby. And that year, we were blowing them fools out. Guess who was at the game we lost? We lost two games that year, 15-1. and one. I wasn't at the Kansas City Chiefs game, but I was in the playoff game against the Giants, me and my buddy Floyd. We left that stadium. We were the, I promise you, we were the last two people to leave sitting down in the stadium. And we left because it just got really cold. When you had all them bodies next to you, it gets mad warm and you good and you toasty. As soon as them cats left, I was done. I was screaming. I was shouting. My voice was gone and it was over. And my point is, is when you play a defense that's legit, that's the same team that went on to win the Super Bowl that year. That beat us. When you play a team that plays great defense, it will neutralize all quarterbacks. Y'all remember Tom Brady in the undefeated year. They went and played those very same Giants. What happened? Them fools were 17-0, and 0, dog. They were beating everybody. I think they averaged like 38 points a game. It was so stupid. We seen them dudes throwing 50 burgers on everyone. When you run into a great defense, done. Peyton Manning, first play against the Legion of Boom. You knew it was bad. He's fumbling the ball because he snapped it so far back. And a great defense neutralized the number one offense we've ever seen in history up until that point. So when you double down on offenses, especially when a guy's not that good. So you see a guy who's good. Like, you see Aaron do it. You see... Manning do it. You see Brady do it. And those guys had good teams. And they deserved that kind of money and didn't ever get paid like that. Now you put Jordan Love in that position. He's not even close to those dudes. Those teams aren't even close to those teams. And you paid him tied with the highest. Bruh. I'm just throwing facts at y'all cats. I don't understand. Like, I really don't understand.
This dude did not deserve this kind of money. And I'm happy for him as an individual, right? If I'm just looking at a man to man, hey, you did what you needed to do. You got paid. Man, but this cripples the team. This puts us in a bad position. I'm a shareholder as well. So, like, I, it's real for me. It's really real for me. But the difference is, is I'm not blind like most of the fans that are out there who just want to have this blind confidence for absolutely no reason. Bro, when we won in 2010, I thought for sure, for sure, this is one of like three Super Bowls, at least. That Jigga won one Super Bowl for the Green Bay Packers. One. The same as much, the same amount Brett Favre did. And who cares if Brett Favre took us to two? He still won one. So we've had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks winning one Super Bowl apiece. And if that's not on the organization and making sure the team around them is legit, because they have the track record, that's all on them, man. And that's what we just did. We just locked up a dude who we just projected to be by the way we paid him to be a Hall of Fame quarterback that should win us at least one Super Bowl. At least. And this dude beat the brakes off Dallas, which Dallas has always done what they've always done. And got the brakes beat off of him against the San Francisco 49ers. You see the stats? You see them for yourself? QBR 42.9 and QB rating 72.4. That's worth 55. He wasn't like, oh, I'm the reason we won. Or I'm the re I'm not the reason we lost. He didn't play like that. Again, it wasn't just one play, but you know what I'm talking about. You lose the game. You completed 70% of your passes. You threw for three touchdowns. You had no interceptions. You had no fumbles. Your QB rating was like 100 but your defense just gave up a ton of points. That sounds like Aaron Rodgers to me, right? But he didn't even play like that. And then what do you do? You go, oh, well, he didn't He didn't throw the ball and get risky with it. Well, you see the outcome. Would you rather lose the game and have your quarterback look like trash? Or would you rather lose the game and at least know your quarterback wasn't part of the problem? I'd rather take the latter. So we'll see. Jordan Love has a chance to prove me wrong this year. I don't think he proved me wrong last year. And now it's going to get real because we actually have tape on him. They're going to see his tendencies. And the NFL is going to put him to the test because they like winning just as much as we do. So this guy, number one pick, we went up in the draft to get. And we just tried to find any way to justify this. That just makes Green Bay look really, really stupid if this dude does not pan out. And you know that young wide receiver talent, that group of wide receivers there, do you really think that it's Jordan Love and his accuracy that's making them look good? Or is it just a combination of all of them kind of collectively playing well together? So them cats going to want to get paid. Because I think it's a collective group. I don't think this is Aaron Rodgers with Greg Jennings and Donald Driver and Jordy Nelson. Meaning you throw the average vet In a situation with Aaron Rodgers, he performs really well. Of course, you get rookies who don't know the damn play. They don't run the right routes. You saw what happened last time in Green Bay on a broken thumb. You see in the first play of the, 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 the season, Christian Watson wide open drops a pass. That's not on him. But with Jordan Love, I'm not seeing that Aaron like talent. I'm seeing some of his release. I'm seeing the foot thing where he does he throws it off balance, but can he keep doing that consistently for 10 plus years like Aaron did to the point where guys know what you're going to do and they still can't stop you? Man, that's yet to be seen. So, I'm not going to drag it on. I'm very frustrated with this. And the schedule, I don't I mean, we saw the schedule. Man, let let me pull it back up again. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't remember the schedule. I think I picked like 11 and 6. What was it? It was 11 and something. I want to say I picked like 11 games. Let's look at the opponents. 
Because, man, this kid's got to come out. Colts, Vikings, Cardinals, Texans, Dolphins, Saints, Lions. I mean, you got to remember some of the teams we lost to last year. We lost to the Giants last year. So we're not that good, y'all. I might have to go through this again and maybe re-up and change a little bit. But, man, Eagles, Titans, Rams, Jags. Man, it's just getting real, y'all. I remember when I'd go through these games, you would give you you would give your team just you give your team at least 14 points because you had Aaron Rodgers behind center. Do you feel that way now? I don't. Hey, if you're watching me on Twitch, hit me up with a follow. If you're watching me on YouTube, like and subscribe. This is just another Cheesehead Podcast. Thank you for listening. History is being made as we speak. Jordan Love got paid. I don't agree with it, but he got his money. Can't be mad at the man, but I'm mad at the organization for, again, making another foolish mistake. I believe it to be another foolish mistake, but that is yet to be seen as well. Because if he comes in and he balls out, I will get on this podcast and I will apologize. I will publicly apologize. I'll be like, hey, my bad, Jordan. I guess... Lightning does strike three times in the same place. Okay, so that's fine. And I'd love to be wrong, but I highly doubt it. And as always, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you should get to know him. It will be the best decision you ever make in your life. Just ask him to come into your life. Trust me, the best decision you ever make. Your, Your eternity matters so much more when you look at the comparison of living so short on this earth. Peace, love, and hap. I will catch you guys on the next one.